fraction will be undefined when the denominator is zero. So we have to make sure that the denominator is never zero. At the values of x at which the denominator is zero, the function will have a vertical asymptote only if this factor does not go away with another factor of e to the x minus 2 from the top. If it does go, so I'm just going to say alternate or a similar example, but not quite. If I have this situation, let's say, e to the x and then e to the x minus 2, and then I have e to the x minus 2, I still have to write this restriction, not for the numerator, for the denominator. But I will be simplifying it, and the result of this equation, that solution, will create a whole, not a vertical asymptote. But obviously, this is not the case here. The e to the x minus 2 the, does not have, this function does not have an e to the x minus 2 factor in the numerator, so I cannot simplify it. So if this equation has solutions, the solution or solutions will create vertical asymptotes. So this is an exponential equation, exponential. Anyone remembers how to solve an exponential equation? You take the natural log of both sides. Very good. So we apply natural log to both sides. So natural log or any log allows us to put the, the power in front as a factor. So we have x and we should write natural log e, but we know that natural log e equals Josh? Isaac, go ahead. Josh, how much is natural log e? I'm not sure about this one. Okay, uh, Lindsay? Uh, I'm not quite sure either. Is it one? Of course, just put in the calculator. My wonderful students, put it in the calculator. Okay, let me show you how to determine that, if you forgot. We don't use a calculator for this, but just in case, let me show you where to find it. I'm sharing my screen. Here it is. So, so here's natural log right here. And then second and E, the division symbol, but second and E. Close the parenthesis and voila. One. Sorry, guys, you're in the way. Okay, back to our situation here. So um, then x equals natural log 2. So x equals natural log 2 is a vertical asymptote for this function. If I'm asked to find the limits left and right, that I will always ask you to do that, not just to find the vertical asymptote. But you will also have to determine the limit as x approaches natural log 2 from the left of the function and le limit as x approaches natural log 2 from the right of the function. So the numerator, no matter what, is a positive number, so we don't have any problem with the numerator. The denominator, however, is zero. So we have to determine the sign of the infinity. So we know that these will be infinities, but we don't know the sign. So natural log 2 from the left, you can simply, one option would be, it would be even easier for me to explain, just plug in this function, just this function, e to the x minus 2 in the graphing calculator, so I'm going to share again, and in y equals, we plug in natural log uh, e to the x, sorry, e to the x, x, and then outside minus 2, and then I go to second and table, and I will plug in natural log 2 natural log 2, close the parenthesis, minus a little bit 
and see the sign. And then I will plug in natural log 2 plus a little bit. And I see the sign from the right. So the first one is negative from the left and the right the other sign the other one is positive from the right. Very good question mark. I appreciate this. As you know, everyone I'm talking to everyone now there is no way I can show every possible type of problem in class. So I rely on you. Mark, is this good enough? Do we need anything else here? So the, uh, it ended up being the vertical isotopes for what? I'm sorry? What were the vertical asymptotes? But we only have one solution. What do you mean by vertical asymptotes? Oh, I, I mean... There is only one yeah. x, right? Only x equals natural log 2 is the vertical asymptote. Okay. The denominator, when I set it equal to zero, has I found only one solution. So I cannot the function cannot have more than one vertical asymptote. Is that okay? Um, yeah, I'll review it a little bit more after class. But is it okay? Do you have any questions? No, that helps clear up a couple of things. I, I didn't know what to do with the uh, the exponential, the LE part in the beginning, so that helped. Okay. Very good. Other questions for me? Anything else? Is there anything else? Uh, I forgot to add that question uh, to the homework since I forgot it. I'm going to add it for, th for Thursday. That's 62 uh, from uh, 2.5. The one that I did not read um, carefully what he was asking. I only want you to use the IVT. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to explain again. Not the requirements that you have there, but just find an interval, a one unit interval. I will put that in writing. Anything else for me or we uh, finish up chapter, chapter 2 with 2.7 and 2.8. Did I promise anything? Did I forget anything? Did I promise something last time? I don't want to forget anything. I don't think I had anything to carry over, did I? Anyone remembers anything? I think there's a question that you wanted to do, but I'm not I sure think it was one. that one uh, for our last time. I don't think I left one yeah. uh, from last Thursday till today. I think I left one off Before from Tuesday to Thursday. But if you if you find anything, let me know. Okay. So uh, two dot seven and two dot eight. So the equipment is right in front of me, so I can see. Can you see, or is it? I should pull it further down a little bit. Is this okay? Not That's really. Okay. Not. That's fine. Okay. So two dot seven and two dot eight. We are revisiting uh, the beginning of the chapter. But now we have a lot of information that we acquired in the meantime, and a lot of skills. So all this deals with uh, the derivative at a point, and the derivative function. I always present these two together, because they refer to the same thing. So, first of all, let's go back to our um, function that we graphed so many times before. And here it is. So, here's our function. It's f of x. And, of course, I have a point here. So this is x, this is point p, and this is point f of x. And this is the y value of that point, f of x, of course. And I would like to determine the slope of this line. So obviously this is the tangent at p, this line, is a tangent at p. And I want to determine the slope of the tangent at p. That's my question. And we know that I only have one point. 
So in order to determine the slope of a line, I need two points. But I only have one. What we did in the past, we looked at the difference quotient. Anyone would like to tell us the difference quotient? Uh, uh, then x plus h minus f of h, fx, or down over h. Very good. Awesome. So what was this? This was almost, almost the slope of this line, right? Because we said h is small. So the difference quotient is approximately the slope of the tangent line at P. It's not exactly. So in our next step, we are going to put together two things. We are going to put the limit operator together with the difference quotient. So when H gets closer and closer to zero. Remember when we say age approaches zero, we literally mean age does not equal zero. We say age approaches zero. So when we put together the limit operator with the difference quotient, here's what we get. The limit as age approaches zero from f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And this is guaranteed to be the slope of the tangent line at P. Guaranteed. Furthermore, this is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at any point where f of x, now I'm going to use a word that we haven't seen before or talked about before, maybe you have it from your past history with math, where uh, at any point where f of x is differentiable. What does that mean? Where the function has a derivative. Differentiable, it mean, means where the function has a derivative. Or where the derivative exists, in other words. So now you can say you're just throwing different concepts here without explaining what this means. It, that's what I'm going to do back, go back and explain again. So if I want to determine the slope of the tangent line here, I have to start with a difference quotient. I have to create point Q as we did in the past. And point Q has the coordinates X plus H and of course the Y coordinate is f of x plus h as we've done in the past. I have to determine the slope of the uh, secant line, which is this. And then if I want to determine the slope of the tangent line, then I will say, okay, point Q gets closer and closer to P, which means that h approaches zero. So when I apply the limit operator to the difference quotient, meaning when h approaches zero, I create this limit of the difference quotient, which is nothing else but the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at any point, not just p, but at any point where the function is differentiable or where the function has a derivative or where the derivative, when the derivative exists. So now that's the re reason why I left some room here. This is, the notation is f prime of x. So f prime of x 
is nothing else but putting together the difference quotient with the limit operator. The difference quotient with the limit operator when age approaches zero is this function. What does it give? It gives the slope of the tangent line, but furthermore, what does the slope of the tangent line mean? The rate of change at that point, the instantaneous rate of change. So this is the same with instantaneous rate of change at any point same thing same same explanation at any point at any point where f of x is differentiable where the function has a derivative or where the derivative exists how come this function doesn't exist always so that's why the function the original function when the derivative exists, we say it's differentiable. But when its derivative does not exist at a point, we say the function itself is not differentiable at that point where the derivative does not exist. Where would a function be non-differentiable? Yep, that's my next step. So keep in mind that the derivative is a limit. Not all limit ex limits exist. So the function the derivative is a limit and we know in many situations this this number this answer is infinity negative infinity or d and e in all those situations the derivative does not exist hence the function we say at those points is not differentiable and that's my next step how come in which situations in other words uh, a function is not differentiable that's my next step